Well, good afternoon. JD with Soda Solar here down in Quartzsite, Arizona. A beautiful weather, a little bit breezy right now. Uh, but today we are installing solar, inverter, batteries, all that fun stuff on this 2015 Host pickup camper. Uh, now this thing is just immaculate. It's like a castle. Uh, I love it how it's got three slides on it. One on that side, one on that side, one right back here. Uh, just a fantastic rig, especially for uh, just going anywhere you want to go. Throw it on the back of a one ton and you can go pretty much anywhere. Uh, but the customer is having us install pretty much as much solar as we can fit on the roof of it without doing a roof rack on top and going over the uh, air conditioning and all that fun stuff. We're going to be adding, let's see, here's two of the Epic 460 amp hour batteries, so 920, 920 amp hours of batteries, Multi Plus 3000, uh, the smart solar charge controller. Uh, they're not going with the servo and screen and everything for monitoring, they just want to use their phones uh, for that. And I'll show you what we've got going on right now. So most of it's going to be going in this big pass-through bay right here. And this bay is huge. It's awesome. Uh, we're going to be trying to tuck it right up against that uh, gray tank right there. We're going to be, I think what the plan is, we're going back and forth on this a little bit. Uh, so this rig is pretty heavy. I guess it weighs 4,000, 4,500 pounds. Uh, so it is not light to say the least. Uh, so we're trying to keep as much weight as possible towards the front of the rig. Uh, so that way it's sitting more right above the rear axles of the truck. Uh, so we're trying to keep this as far forward as we can get it. I think what we're going to be doing is putting the batteries right up against that tank. And then we're going to be doing our backboard with the inverter and all that fun stuff on it uh, right in front of it. So the batteries will be kind of buried back in there. It still leaves access to all of this stuff on the left side here. Uh, it's a transfer switch on the very back. Uh, that next uh, light gray box is for the uh, the leveling system uh, right over there and there. And then there's the, uh, the converter right there from 110 down to 12 volt and the water pump right here. So we want easy access to all of this stuff over here. Uh, but keep it uh, tucked as far forward as we can. So that way they have as, as much usable storage space towards the back here, uh, you know, bins to be able to pull in and out and all that stuff. Uh, here, I'll show you what is inside right now. All right, come on in here. And, it's a little bit breezy. All right, so this is uh, the inside of it. You can see a slide there. Uh, right here, there's a nice couch uh, that's part of this slide here. The customer did say the one downside with this rig is that with this slide in, you can't get into the rig, which isn't, well, I guess you could kind of, it's really difficult to get in. It's kind of the bottom line on that. Uh, but here's the slide here is on this kitchen side. Uh, the other thing too, the passenger side of, of this pickup camper is the heavy side. It's got the fridge, it's got all this uh, counter and cabinets. I guess these are solid wood cabinets here. So this is not a light build. Uh, but considering it's 10 years old, it's still in immaculate shape. I don't really see any like delamination or anything like that on any of the furniture or, or any of the wood. A lot of times that starts happening once a rig gets 10 years old. Uh, but up here is the main breaker box. And it's nice how they made it. So back behind here, going all the way up from the roof, back behind this area and straight down is a chaseway for all of the wiring to go. You can kind of see some of it running right in front of that gray tank down in the bottom. Uh, so we're going to be able to tie into our, it's a 30 amp rig, so our, our AC mains going right up to the breaker box here. Uh, we can tie in down there right off of the transfer switch, which is awesome. Uh, this also has solar pre-wire, which I was really excited about. Uh, it's up on the roof. I'll show you uh, what's up there. But I already checked that out. That's 10 gauge running from there all the way down. Uh, so this is going to be a pretty straightforward install once we get everything going. Uh, but it's just a beautiful rig. I'll show you around a little bit the, the dinette slide. And then the bathroom is right here. It's pretty crazy at how uh, it all fits right here. So this is the door. I'll back up a little bit, but it's, it rotates that way. And then you have a really nice size shower for, especially for a pickup camper. So you've got a, a quite decent sized bathroom all in all. And then the, uh, the bedroom right up front there, there's a nice escape hatch in the ceiling. One of the tough things that we were trying to figure out with solar is how many panels we could fit on this thing. Uh, we're big fans of using the rich 200 watt uh, panels up there. It's going to be tight on how many we can fit. We might end up piecing it together with some 100 watts and some 50 watts and then uh, a couple of the 200s as well. We'll see how that goes. Uh, it's a little bit breezy outside, but I think we're okay to go up on the roof. I'll show you what we got going on right now. 
All right, up on the roof here, you can see this is the solar pre-wire right here. Uh, so it's a little bit different right off of the plug. Uh, they actually ran a 12 gauge, but then it dives down to, to 10 gauge wire right below. You see that yellow splice in it right there. So we're just gonna cut it right below that splice and then we'll tie in our solar wires right on there. Actually, I might throw the MC4 connectors on there for the solar that's going on here. But the plan, hopefully, is to fit uh, a 200 watt right here, a 200 watt over here, and then on this side, it's gonna be really close. A 200 watt, a 200 watt, and then this side, I know we got more than enough real estate for two of those right here and here. Uh, the TV antenna is gonna be going away. It's fairly common. Uh, not too many people actually use that antenna anymore. So we'll see what happens. If we need to, uh, we can fit 100 watts on either side of the escape hatch right here. And then on this side here, if we can do a 200, and then I don't know if we could fit two 100s back over here somehow or maybe a couple of 50s we'll see i gotta measure it out we gotta get exact measurements we we haven't gotten anything exactly how it's supposed to be and you can see back over there is the shop it's built it's finally up uh just finishing up getting the front put on it and the roll-up doors and then oh that's gonna be so nice uh well to do installs out of the sun and the wind all right i'm gonna get plugging away at this i'll let you know how it progresses well, good morning from inside the uh, the luggage compartment down here. I'll show you where we're at. So we got both batteries fitting right up here. They fit just beautifully uh, width-wise over here. Uh, we have a, a block of wood back on the other side, uh, basically the same thing as this right here, our D-rings uh, onto it and then strapped down uh, with the ratchet strap there. And then over here we have a block uh, that's kind of wedging them in this way. So these things shouldn't be going anywhere uh, at all. But they fit really nice. Uh, another, the nice thing too, all of our wiring, the main stuff is just along this stretch right here. We got our, uh, let's see, this line here is our 30 amp input, shore power. Uh, these loose ones here are our generator. And then this one right here goes up to our breaker box. Uh, so it should be pretty easy to tie into the transfer switch right here for the board. The board is going to be going right on top of all this. So we're going to screw it into this block here and this block up here. Uh, and then we've got easy access. We got to get the batteries wired in here first. Uh, and then the mains are going to be coming up over the board right over here in this area. But it's coming along nicely. Uh, although it's really windy out today. So I don't think we're going to be doing solar today. So I'll keep you posted with, actually I'll go show you the board. I got that wired up yesterday. I'm really excited for how that looks. Actually, I was worried that it wasn't going to look very nice. Uh, just trying to get it to fit in this small space, but I think we have accomplished both function and fashion at the same time. So I'll show you what that is. And here is the board. I was working on most of this yesterday. I got it all programmed up this morning. Uh, and apologize for the complete disaster that this is over here. Again, the shop's almost done. And then there'll be plenty of space. Uh, but we've got the, uh, the Multi Plus uh, 12 volt 3000. Uh, this is just the single 120, so it outputs the uh the hot and the neutral so it's not the two by 120 uh where you got uh both phases are or both lines are powered uh but it's just the single uh save a couple of bucks for the customer and this is a 30 amp rig so it doesn't need both legs uh up we got our smart solar 150 70 charge controller the lynx distributor right here uh the orion uh 50 amp charger so they're going to be able to charge from their truck while they're driving uh, and then our shutoff switch right here, the smart shunt. Uh, they're not doing a servo and screen and all that fun stuff. They're just doing Bluetooth monitoring, which is totally fine. Uh, so we had to, you know, way up over here, you can see we got the uh, VE bus smart dongle. That's so they can Bluetooth into the Multi Plus, because sadly that does not come with Bluetooth on it. Don't know why, just doesn't. Uh, so this is the board. We're going to be working on getting it installed in there in a little bit. I have to prep the area, get the, the wires ran, the batteries wired up and all that stuff. Because once we put this up there, we're not really going to have much access back behind there. Yeah, it's going good. I'll, uh, I'll update you when uh, more things progress. And good morning. I want to let you know everything that we got accomplished yesterday and the day before. And now uh, there's some side-by-side -side driving way over there uh, but it's a great day a little cloudy today we're going to be getting solar on the roof and let me show you what we wrapped up yesterday look at this beast back in here we got the board installed behind that are all the batteries or the the two 460 uh epic batteries are back behind there uh let me tell you getting this thing in was a little bit of a pain i had it measured out calculated just perfectly 
the one thing that I miscalculated was that little dump valve. Uh, you can see on that line over there, there's the dump valve. Uh, we were just barely hitting it with a multi plus and like when you wedged it in there and I just oh, I didn't want that to be causing a problem because the last thing you need when you're traveling up to Alaska That's what uh, these customers are gonna be doing with this is to have your gray tank start leaking in the back of your truck And it's not easy to get to because there's a giant board and batteries that are blocking it in So I ended up taking out that board a couple of different times test fitting it putting it back in cutting some other stuff off testing it again Trying to make it fit. Finally, got it in there, and it is just amazing. Uh, so here it is, kind of in the nutshell. Uh, we got the Multi Plus 3000 on the left. Uh, right up above that is the solar breaker. We got to get that wired in. Uh, to the right of it is the Bluetooth dongle that the Multi Plus is connected to. And then we have the solar, the Smart Solar 15070, followed by the Orion XS1212. Uh, which run in those lines. So we got those uh, running all the way up to the front of the truck. I'll show you how we're doing that. Uh, and then down we have the Lynx distributor down at the bottom, the smart shunt right off the Lynx distributor. And then our uh, Dihul 400 amp breaker on the right hand side. So that's the main battery disconnect. Normally we don't like having our disconnects this far back in uh, the truck, but we talked to the customer. They wanted everything just right back there, uh, knowing they can get at it. Realistically, they won't really have to get to it uh, very often. You know, if they're putting it in storage, maybe they'll disconnect that. Um, but that's what they wanted, and I uh, didn't see any reason. And they're going to be putting uh, right on the bottom there, they're going to be putting like an L bracket cleat. Uh, so that way they can slide totes in this compartment still all the way back, and it'll hit that cleat and still have a few inches of clearance before it's going to actually be touching any of the Victron equipment. All right, so we got that in there. Uh, up top, I'll show you what we're gonna be doing up top here in a second, but it is going to be superb. We're gonna be fitting, I'm 90% sure, we're gonna be fitting 1200 watts on the roof, uh, which is just gonna be an amazing setup for this rig. And I'll show you inside, uh, something goofy we learned about host and where they will sometimes hide the stock 1000 watt inverter. Uh, that was one we looked around for a little bit and couldn't figure out finally called host and they let us know where that's at so that makes it a lot nicer all right we're getting solar on here today i got to wrap up some uh some wiring stuff and uh cut the covers for our uh, raceway up there and uh, then they'll be heading on out of here all right i'll show you what we got on the roof all right we made it up on the roof and we are going to be at least attempting two 200 watt panels here and here on the very front, we're gonna put one there and one over there. And then on this side, once this TV antenna gets removed, one here and one here, which is going to be a total of 1200 watts. Our charge controller can realistically handle 1000 watts. Uh, so it's more than enough headroom. And considering the different angles and everything, you're not gonna get an ideal situation on all six panels ever. Either these ones right up top are gonna be really cranking in those ones on the front nose are going to be uh, a little bit lower output uh, but we're going to be hooking it up in a 2s so two panels in series uh 3p so all of those series panels paralleled together at the roof port so we'll do probably this set here this set here and this set here all right i'm going to rip a tv antenna off now all right solar is now all buttoned up we were able to fit both panels right here look how close this is right on the edge uh, that that back edge of the solar panel is just back well, probably half inch from that rain gutter uh, That's down there, but that turned out beautiful comes all the way up front. It's right next to that vent uh, That's right in front of it on this right side here. Actually, there wasn't really anything that was in the way uh, I tried to leave as much space back here because uh, there's a ladder on the back of the rig that comes up right here where this railing is uh, So leave some space for climbing up there and then these two panels up top here just oh, couldn't get any better. This escape hatch uh, right up here fits, we got a half inch of space in between there. And then it extends from back here all the way up to just behind uh, that fiberglass front cap. And these screws bit into really good, I think aluminum frame uh, that was down below it. So that got really good. Uh, these side panels over here, this entire edge on both sides grabbed uh, the aluminum frame that was on there. Uh, got everything all die cored up so it's sealed up really good. All of the the wires are all secured down and then a little glob of die core on top of it because those little a little uh, sticky back tape stuff that comes on those things, that only lasts like maybe a week if you just leave it alone. But 
put some Dicor on it, then it actually stays. All right, I'm gonna head down, turn on the solar, and let's see what we're making. It's really overcast today. I think on, on uh, our bus over there, we got 5,800 watts on the roof, and we were showing maybe 1,500 watts coming in on that. So it's really hazy. Grant, I do have a layer of dust uh, on the top there, and these panels are squeaky clean, so maybe that'll help out. All right, I'm gonna move all of this stuff off of here, and we'll see what that does. And here it is, just finished cutting the covers for the backboard, and it is in place. Fully functional, turned on the solar breaker, and it is working great. This is the final, I, oh, I still gotta put our uh, soda solar sticker right in the middle of it. Man, I'm slacking here. Oh, I was just so happy I had to shoot some video of that. Uh, but it's working good, turn on the, the solar breaker. And uh, we got about 1200, or we have 1200 watts on the roof right now, and I was seeing it actually hitting 500 watts. And it's still, uh, I mean, there's high clouds uh, going on right now, so it's working really good on my personal rig. I'm not getting nearly that much right now. Uh, granted, I do have a layer of dust on the panel, so that probably has a little bit of an impact. But this is working good. A couple things to button up inside, and this install will be done. Oh, still have to load uh, test it too. We like, you know, turn on the air conditioner. Let's let's crank the system hard for a while. That way we can see if there are going to be any problems. Usually they manifest themselves right away. Uh, so we still got to push that and uh, make sure everything's going good. But it is uh, it is awesome right now. Like I'm really happy with how this is turning out. All right, here it is, all wrapped up. Just got finished load testing this thing, and it is. It's just cooking great. Uh, nothing got warm. We ran the air conditioner for a while, fired up the generator. We found, so the generator is a 2,500 watt Onan uh, LP generator. And we found that it, its happy spot is about 15 amps set on the input current limit on the MultiPlus. Uh, that just seemed to be sweet spot. It's running really good. You start pushing it more than that. And, uh, and it started, the MultiPlus kind of would, would kick in and out a couple times of accepting that. Uh, AC signal. So we're running about 15 amps, which should be a pretty good fuel efficiency too. Propane generators kind of take a fair amount of propane. So that uh, is, is a really good spot for that. Uh, but we got all of this wrapped up in here. Uh, it's just, it fits so nice in here. I'm so happy with it. Um, yeah, got it all cleaned up. I'll show you what we got going on inside. Oh, and another thing that we discovered uh, in this where the old inverter was, or the old inverter line, uh, I think I showed you, I don't know if I showed you or not. I'll tell you right now. So here is the main breaker box, right up here. And there is an inverter circuit on this line. Uh, basically just powers the TVs, there's an outlet here, and then there's a TV back in the bedroom uh, with an outlet. But the old inverter was down underneath uh, this cabinet right here. There was a false floor and it was sitting down there. That inverter only had DC coming into it to power it, and then it would power that AC load only by inverting, uh, which I thought was really interesting. Most of the time there's an AC line going into the inverter that it'll pass through when you're connected on shore power, or if you disconnect from shore power, it'll just invert uh, from the batteries that way. Uh, but in order to get that line powered again, uh, it was really nice. I thought we were going to have to pull another cable from up here all the way down to where that inverter was. Uh, but actually we were able to pull, so right back behind here is kind of a chaseway going all the way up. We were able to pull that AC line for these outlets right here from down here where they were at the inverter all the way up to here and then ended up uh, just double landing it on, uh, let's see here, what circuit was that? That was the uh, galley receptacles is what we landed it on. So uh, just poked it in the back of the breaker box, landed it on this one right here and uh, happy as can be, it's working good. Uh, and it was really nice too, if when we needed access stuff, the fireplace, you could take that out easily. Uh, all in all, this was a really straightforward install. There were, were a couple of, I wouldn't even say surprises, uh, questions that ended up being really simple. Uh, so this is just an amazing rig. I love uh, the space that this host has. It is just a beautiful rig, well taken care of, uh, a lot of really awesome things to it. Um, I think that's about it. Here, I'll go outside and uh, do the sign off. So uh, let us know if you have any questions on, on this build, on any other build. This was a really fun one, 1200 watts on the roof. Uh, and it's working great, absolutely great. We've got the batteries all topped off. So uh, again, questions, comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you for watching all of the craziness that we got going on here at Soda Solar. And let us know if you have uh, any solar related needs, give us a shout. We'd uh, love to help you out. All right, we'll see you in the next video.